Hey guys, it's Morella. So today I'm going to show you how I grew my hair a foot in a year. Now, that is not clickbait. It's not a lie. It's not an exaggeration. I measured it to make sure. I really grew my hair 12 inches in less than a year, which is insane. Because the average person's hair is supposed to grow about a half an inch a month, which would make six inches by the end of the year. And it has not even been a full year and my hair has grown double that. So I'm gonna get all into my hair care routine products that I use, heat tools that I use, what I did. It is actually really easy. Before I get started, I wanted to tell you guys, I totally have a complete tutorial on this look. It is the look using Kathleen Light's ColourPop collab, the Dream Street palette. I get a lot of questions in my videos like, can you do a tutorial on this look? And most of the time I'm like, I already have one. So the number one thing that I started doing to my hair in order to make it grow completely out is I stopped coloring it. I stopped using bleach or chemicals on my hair. Earlier this year, probably in like February or March, I did color the part of my hair that was already colored. So you guys are probably like, your hair isn't much longer than it was before, which is true. And that is because I cut it like every two weeks probably. But you will also notice that if I take a layer of hair, only the very last maybe two inches is colored. And you can see it kind of almost looks like I have an ombre. This is all regrowth or like roots. It's all my natural color up until the last inch and a half, two inches of my hair. So you can see when I do this, the color is different. That's because all of this has grown out and all that's left is this little baby piece at the end that is not my natural hair. The part of my hair that was already dyed or bleached was about up to here when the year started. And I will include a picture from January so that you can see, like you can see where my roots are and where my hair color is. So the reason why I had so much color in my hair is because I used to be blonde two years ago. And then last year I was like tired of the blonde. I dyed it back brown, but the brown could never get to my natural color. Like no matter how many times I dyed it darker to try to match my roots, it would always fade within like a week or two and it would fade to this brassy, gross brown color. I just hate that like in between brassy tone. So yeah, it would fade to that over and over and I dyed it darker so many times, which was very damaging because even though I was no longer bleaching it, I was still putting dye on my hair and it just was not good. So finally I dyed it like as dark as I could go without it being like black and without me feeling like it was way darker than my natural color because my natural color is a neutral or cool toned level 4.5 because it is right in between a four and a five. That means it's a medium brown. Darkest is a level one, which is black. Highest is a level nine, which is like platinum blonde. So I think the very last time I dyed my hair brown was January. And then in February, I dyed the already dyed part with Arctic Fox hair color, which is non-chemical hair color. It's like a brightly colored conditioner that attracts to the pieces of your hair that are lighter and sticks to them, but it doesn't damage your hair. So between like February and probably May, I was using Arctic Fox on the lighter parts of my hair. And luckily I discovered that if I mixed Arctic Fox, like the very dark blue, the orange, and the purple, I could make a dark brown and it actually stuck to my hair and didn't fade so easily. So I started using that and making my hair just all dark brown. So if you guys are into colorful hair or if you just wanna like try something that's natural and not gonna damage your hair, I would definitely suggest Arctic Fox. So stopping the chemicals and bleach on my hair really helped it to grow and I just let it all keep growing out. So I would use the Arctic Fox, but I would only use it on the part that was already dyed. So say I were to do it now, I would only do it on the last like two inches of my hair. On the other hand, my texture that I'm wearing right now is natural. My hair is naturally straight. It is medium to fine, but I do have a lot, a lot of hair. It's nice because it holds a style and I have a lot of it, so it looks nice and full. But the bad part about having naturally straight hair is it goes completely flat really easily. I need a lot of product to hold the curl if there is any humidity. Another thing that I did to really help it grow is like I said, I would trim it like every two weeks, seriously. Three weeks if I'm feeling lazy and haven't. So trimming your hair is something that I stand behind 100% because it totally worked for me. And I know when you're growing your hair out, you want it to be long and you're like, I don't wanna cut it, but that, in itself is damaging because when you have split ends, they'll just keep splitting up the hair shaft and your hair will never 
go back to being like 100% healthy until you cut off all those dead ends. So the more often that you're cutting your hair, the more likely you are to really get those dead ends before they like move up your hair and damage it further and you're more likely to have healthier hair. So really the only two things that I did that are like changing the hair is not coloring it anymore and trimming it often. All the rest was products and I didn't make drastic changes to my diet. I did become vegan within the last six months and I feel like that helped kind of like everything and your diet does really help your hair to grow. But because my diet change wasn't drastic because I had already been cutting out animal products for the past five years, it was like a very slow transition into becoming vegan. So I can't really attribute my hair growth or my hair healthiness to that. I also didn't stop heat styling it. I still heat style it almost every day. And although that is damaging, um, you can tell my hair is still shiny. It's not broken. It doesn't make it dull or lifeless. I think um, you just have to learn what heat setting your hair can take and keep it on the lowest setting possible for your hair to still maintain a style. Because if you put it too low, your curls won't last or your straightening won't last. So you wanna make sure that your style holds, but it's also the least damaging to your own hair. Everyone's hair is different, so for me it was trial and error. My hair can take a lot of heat and also a lot of like bleach, you know, without breakage, but everyone is different. If your hair texture is really fine, I suggest using a lower heat setting. And if your hair is really thick and coarse, highest heat setting, you can probably take it. But I wouldn't suggest holding the curling iron on your hair for a long time. Or same thing with the straightener, you know, just like one single quick pass should work. Now I'm going to start in like the order that I do everything. So I use a wet brush. This one is actually Conair, so it's not the wet brush brand. But these brushes with like, I don't know, the certain kind of bristles... If you just go to the store, you'll see what I mean. There are like wet brushes, they have them at Target, Walmart, I think maybe Walgreens. Pretty much like anywhere where you can get hair brushes, they have wet brushes or something very comparable. They pretty much all look the same in my experience. They're like a colorful brush with the tips of the bristles being the same color and then this part is black. It should be advertised on like the packaging in case you guys are confused, like can be used wet or dry. However, I never brush my hair when it's wet. I brush it before I shower. I honestly feel like this helps a lot because you're never supposed to brush wet hair. Any hairstylist or anyone who's a professional will tell you never ever brush wet hair. And that's because when your hair is wet, it's the most susceptible to damage. So if you're brushing it and stretching it and taking out those knots, it's gonna cause breakage. So little tip trick that I like to tell everyone and that I like to put in basically all of my hair videos is brush your hair before you wash it. Like just think about how much easier it will make your life because when you're in the shower and you're washing your hair and trying to put the conditioner through your ends and it's tangled that's the worst feeling ever because you're like trying to brush the conditioner through your strands and it's like you know awful so if you brush your hair beforehand it'll be really nice you put the shampoo and conditioner in wash it out you know smooth and when you get out of the shower your hair isn't tangled right such a good idea. I doubt I'm the first person to ever think of this, but I've seen so many people brush their hair after they get out of the shower and I'm like, mm -mm. oh girl, it hurts my heart. I definitely suggest the wet brushes, no matter what the brand, honestly, anything that is made for wet or dry hair, it goes through hair so nicely, like no tangles. Look at that. So for anyone who gets really tangly hair and they have problems with their hair getting like a lot of knots and just being so hard to brush through. If your hair is naturally curly or wavy and really coarse and dense and you're like, oh my god, you know, my life is so hard. Wet brushes make it so much easier. Now, I no longer have color treated hair. I don't count the last inch and a half as color treated because honestly, I'm going to cut that off in like another month. You know, it's going to be gone. So right now, the shampoo and conditioner that I'm using is the brand Maui. I have the Shea Butter Shampoo and the Bamboo Fibers Conditioner. The Shea Butter says Heal and Hydrate and then the Bamboo says Thicken and Restore. But honestly, <laughs> I'm the kind of person that just buys stuff for how they smell. This brand as a whole is really good for your hair because in every single one of their products, the first ingredient is 100% aloe juice. Also, these have no mineral oil, no silicone, no parabens, no gluten, no SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate. No sulfated surfacants because a lot of shampoos that say sulfate free will get you. They'll have something called sulfonate, which is a more intense sulfate. So it's like, okay, that's false advertising, but it's not technically a lie. 
So you really have to be careful like what you put in your hair, especially if you have color treated hair, you wanna really treat it nicely. This has no synthetic dye, no ales, or A-L-E-S. I honestly don't know what that what that is. But it says yes vegan, yes eco-friendly, yes pure coconut water, and yes pure aloe juice. These also say earth friendly, um, not tested on animals, cruelty free, and I know a lot of what is in them is organic. So pretty much the brand as a whole is awesome. Now of course they do do certain things like this one is hydrating and then this one is good for like brittle hair but I just like the way they smell. I've tried different ones. They have like coconut oil and they have a few others but these oh, it just smell so good. I don't ever notice a huge difference whether I'm using a hydrating shampoo or a volumizing shampoo. Honestly to me in my experience shampoo is just always kind of shampoo like it cleans your hair and then conditioner hydrates your ends so. That's pretty much how it always is. I like this brand. I'm up to try like all of them, but this, the bamboo one, is my favorite scent ever. And that is my secret to making beauty product decisions. Fragrance. Next, when I get out of the shower, I use the It's a 10 products. I use the Miracle Leave-In Plus Keratin. I have had this one for quite a while because the reason why I got the one with keratin is because I used to be blonde not long ago. It feels like a lifetime ago, but it was really like not even two years ago. But basically, It's a 10 does 10 things. I'm not gonna read it all because this is gonna be the longest video ever if I do. But it repairs and restores your hair. It is a heat protectant, which is the number one reason why I use it. And it's just really good for your hair. If you're gonna heat style your hair, I definitely recommend using a heat protectant. Now I also use the um, It's a 10 Miracle Plus Oil Treatment. Makes my hair silky smooth and you can still heat style your hair after that oil, which a lot of oils you wanna use them at the end, not before you heat style your hair. I have used a lot of different oils, like I used to use Moroccan oil a lot and I've just tried a lot of different things and my hair has never been quite as shiny and sleek and soft feeling as it is when I use It's a 10. And I used to swear by other products, like I had my old holy grails, you know, but like years of trial and error have showed me that there are better products out there and It's a 10 has always been really, really good. The only qualm I have with it really at all is that I don't love the smell. And that is such a huge deal for me, I know I'm so weird. Are any of you guys like that? Because someone made fun of me for that. I wanna love the way every product that I use smells. And I don't dislike it, it's just not my favorite. So now that we've kind of gone through like, okay, pre-washing, washing, and then after washing, I'm gonna go through my heat styling products because pretty much after I put in my heat protectant, it's just heat styling from there. So the blow dryer that I use is the T3 Micro. I really like to use this what is it called? Attachment? <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Because when I blow dry my hair, I like to do it like very concentrated. When you blow dry your hair, you always want to use a downward motion because your hair has a cuticle over it. Act like it's a little tree and it has little leaves on it, okay? And they stick out like this. And when you blow dry it downward, it makes them lie down flat, which makes your hair shinier. So if you blow dry your hair in a downward motion, it helps to make the cuticle lie flat and just make your hair look more beautiful, more smooth, more soft. It's very helpful. I don't blow dry my hair every time I shower by any means. I usually let it air dry. I blow dry it like 10% of the time. But I love this blow dryer because you can travel with it. You know, just wrap it up like this. That didn't happen. And also it's really powerful, but really tiny. This is it without the attachment. It's so small as you can see, but I used to have other big hair dryers that were not as powerful. I don't really like the wattage or anything, honestly. I don't, but let me tell you, it's good. Most of the time on days that I blow dry my hair, like today, I actually blow dried my hair today. I don't do anything else to it because I only like to use one heat tool at a time. I don't wanna like fry my hair, you know? I worked hard to get it here. I don't wanna fry it. If I ever do use a straightener, which is pretty rare because for the most part I curl my hair, but I do like to wave it or curl it with a straightener. I like to do either like beach waves or curls this way with a straightener occasionally. I use the Irresistible Me Diamond Flat Iron. I like this because you can change the temperature on it anywhere from like, I wanna say 300 to 430, or maybe it's even less than 300. I use it at 380 degrees personally, sometimes 400, but that's the nice thing about it. It's up to you what temperature you wanna use it at. And to me, I used to use a Chi flat iron for years, but I had two Chi flat irons break on me and I wasn't down with that. Like, you know, you're a very reputable company, like make better stuff. The Irresistible Me products are really, really good. Next, the curling iron that I use the most often is the Hot Tools Professional 
one inch barrel I don't know I don't know the name exactly but it has a clamp I do use the clamp I'm old-fashioned that way I use this one probably at about 400 degrees it has heat settings on it as well you can do anywhere from 280 to 430 I think that might be what the straightener is as well now that I think about it I don't want to plug them in because I'm not using them and I don't want to have to set them down carefully like I'm just not in the mood for that but I do think it's important to be able to change the heat setting on your curling iron because if I'm doing like a looser curl look and I want it to be really light and soft I will put the heat at a lower setting that way the curls aren't so like curly and then if I'm doing a more how do I put it you know what I'll just use pictures okay picture with the purple curling iron picture with this curling iron this is the curling iron I use if I want more loose curls and not really curls they're honestly more like waves but they're a different kind of wave and this one does not have a clamp it's just a barrel and it is one and a quarter inch it also has heat settings same thing 280 to 430 and I actually use this one at 430 like I said my hair can take a lot of heat I wouldn't suggest that for everyone's hair because honestly it's not good to use that much heat on your hair all the time. But when I curl my hair with this, I do it like so quickly. I mean, three seconds per piece of hair. I have been curling my hair since I was in third grade. So I was probably eight years old. So that's about a good 17 years of experience. So I trust myself. I know my hair and I know my tools. So if you're like a beginner with curling or, you know, if you have more fine hair or if your hair is damaged, I would not suggest that high of heat. I need to reiterate that a lot. I'm gonna say that a lot of times. You guys are probably like, oh my god, I get it. But you know, I just don't want you guys to fry your hair. You know that video of the little girl who's like curling a piece of hair and it just falls out? We don't want any of that, okay? <laughs> Next, after I heat style, I use a few products. My favorite hairspray ever is the Bumble and Bumble Strong Finish Firm Hold Hairspray. First of all, smells great. Like I said, that's how I make my decisions. It's true. Second of all, oh my gosh, it is the best hold. So I'm actually gonna demonstrate a little piece. I don't really wanna mess up my hair, but whatever. Look at that. It's staying. So now I'm gonna run my fingers through it and make it so it's not like that. But here, I'll do the other side too, just in case you guys are not sure like what I'm showing you. So any way that you like hold your hair, it stays. Nice thing about it though, is that it combs out easily and it doesn't leave a residue. I have this in full size and travel size because of that. It's like the only hairspray that I really like to use at all. I'm not gonna lie, the products that I use are on the pricier side. They're not necessarily ones you can find at the drugstore, but they are what I've found works the best. So if you have fine hair or hair that you find just doesn't stay or you really like a certain style and you want it to really hold, that hairspray is like <laughs> so good. That's me thanking God. Next, like I said, I usually have to use texturizing spray. So I have two favorites. One of them is Beach Club by IGK. IGK is one of my favorite hair product brands ever. It's just so good. Everything smells amazing. So the Beach Club texture spray is supposed to be a sea salt spray without sea salt. Something I'm not including in this video that I should have probably included but I don't have it right now because I ran out is the IGK prenup. It is a in shower hair mask. So good for if your hair is dry. Smells amazing too. But all of the IGK products smell like coconutty. Really, really nice. This one is such a nice texturizer. It really gives you a lot of texture and volume without being like a hard hold, sticky, without drying out your hair. It's just all over great. Next is the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Dry Spun Finish Spray. If you have flat hair, this will be your holy grail, I promise you. Whenever I freelance in Sephora, I don't know if you guys know I do freelancing in Sephora. I don't even sell hair products, but I will like tell everyone about this. If I see them like, oh God, I need some texture. I need some volume, you know, I'm like, there you go. Best volumizer ever. You can spray it at your roots and literally your hair will just like stick up or you can spray it throughout which I love to do with my curls and just give them a lot of volume. And I wore my hair straight in this video because I wanted you guys to see my true natural hair and I wanted you guys to see the length and the texture and the shine of my natural hair so then you guys weren't like, I mean your hair grew but it looks like shit, you know, like I wanted you to really get a good look at it but um curly hair would probably be better to demonstrate how well this works but you guys get the idea next is the it's a 10 miracle dry oil spray plus keratin again plus keratin because i was blonde luckily these have lasted me a really long time they're really good this one i like to use on both wavy and straight hair and by wavy i mean those really soft bouncy waves it's nice to put this in because it really gives you a lot of shine so if you have a smooth 
look that you're going for and you want your hair to look really shiny and healthy, I definitely suggest this. It also deep conditions and controls flyaways, so if you have like really staticky hair, it's gonna help to smooth them all down. And then lastly, for like styling, I am including the IGK Mistress, which this is a sample size or a travel size, it's not full size, but it is a leave-in conditioner. Again, smells like coconut, but it is vegan and cruelty-free, gives UV protection, and it just helps to soften and detangle the hair. So I actually like to use this at the end. You can totally use it when your hair is damp, but I already have like a leave-in conditioner and an oil when my hair is damp. I like for my hair texture to be even all around. So I'll put something in the ends a little to just tame them pretty much. And then lastly, I wanted to include dry shampoo. My hair is naturally really oily, and I think that that somehow goes along with having oily skin because I do have an oily face naturally. My skin is more on the oily side, so I think that my scalp is too. I honestly have to wash my hair every other day, otherwise it is just like so greasy. So if by any chance I can't, then I need to use dry shampoo. And it's a better idea to use dry shampoo anyway because washing your hair every day isn't good for it. So if you have greasy hair, I would suggest every other day using dry shampoo if you have to wash it every day. If you're like me and you have to wash it every other day, then I would suggest using dry shampoo like every two days, you know, just so that you can spread out your shampooings a little more. The best dry shampoo I've ever, ever, ever found for greasy hair to make it look clean and not leave a white cast on your hair, whether you are brunette or blonde, is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo. It smells kind of like lemon, a little bit like Fruity Pebbles. The main ingredient of like the powdery whatever is in here is rice starch. And I have found that starches work better than talcs. You don't want to use talc on your head anyway, like baby powder, because it's just not good for you. It is a carcinogen. It's in a lot of makeup and a lot of products. Yes, but it's not really great for you. So anything you can find that has like starch in it, first of all, works better. Second of all, is better for you. This is just so good. It really actually makes your hair look clean. It doesn't leave the thick, really like textured feel to the hair, which I really don't like that feeling. I truly like the feeling of clean hair. Like if I can run my fingers through my hair and it's like smooth and just like so nice, I love that, you know, but in order to have that all the time, I'd have to wash my hair every day, which is just not feasible or healthy. It's so good. Next dry shampoo that is also really good and leaves like literally no residue at all. This one totally does leave a white residue, but it goes away really easily. It like soaks into your hair so quickly, so you don't ever end up seeing the residue, but it does have one. This one on the other hand is the Bumble and Bumble, I don't know how to say this. I'm just gonna say Prepped Ah Powder because that's what it looks like. Try Invisible. Nourishing dry shampoo. UV protective two-in-one style extender to cleanse roots and then nourish ends. So you can actually use it all the way throughout your hair, which I really like. You're supposed to be able to spray it at the roots and then brush it through the rest of your hair to add UV protection and just kind of help your hair to like be smooth and you know, extend your style. But when it says invisible, it really means invisible. When I spray it in my hair, I don't see any residue at all. So that is really nice because if you're brunette like me, you don't want like white hair, you know, cause then it just ends up looking gray and that's not good. And this one is specifically for dry or damaged hair. So if you have dyed hair, dry hair, brittle hair, and you need a really good dry shampoo, I would definitely suggest this one. If your hair is really, really greasy, on the other hand, I would suggest this one. So they're both great. They both smell nice. They both make your hair feel and look really clean, but they're a little different. And then lastly, I wanted to include the Whey Dry Shampoo Foam. You can get this at Sephora. It comes out literally like a foam. You put it at your roots and it is supposed to help make your hair look less greasy and clean, obviously. But personally, this one does not work for me as a dry shampoo. It does make my hair smell really clean and feel really clean, but it doesn't make it look so much less greasy. What this does do is give me so much volume at the roots. Actually, I'll try to show you a little bit. So you see what I mean? Foam. My hair is actually clean, so I really don't need this, but whatever. Okay, so do you see how much more texture and volume I have now than what I started with? And I don't mind my hair being flat when it's straight because it's just more natural, but when it's curly, I really need this stuff. I need my hair to be lifted off my roots a little, you know, I can't have it like totally flat to my head. So this product really helps for that. You can just see it makes a difference in volume, which is really nice. 
And I would choose this over something specifically like a root lift spray because it's not as hard. A lot of root lift sprays are really crunchy and they just make your roots very super stiff and I don't like that. So this one is really nice. And there's one last thing I thought I should mention because I think it's really great and I really need to buy another one but I haven't had it in a while is the Oribe like dry texturizing spray. I can't remember the exact name but I know it's by Oribe and it comes in a black bottle and it smells amazing and I'm sure a lot of people have talked about it because it is such a good product. So if you're looking for like a volumizer, you know, similar to the two that I mentioned, that one's really good as well. And I think it also works as a dry shampoo. I think it works as all three. Texturizer, volumizing spray, and dry shampoo. All right guys, so those are all the products and tools that I use in my hair and that's pretty much my hair care routine. But you know, other points that I wanted to make were that eating healthy, using a heat protectant, trimming your hair and not dyeing it will help it to grow a lot. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Feel free to ask me anything. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. Please subscribe to me if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.